Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating pixel art from downloaded images in Illustrator. Now before we get going, there's something I want to share with you and that is my new Bank Screen Bar Lite. Now the folks at Bank offered me this Screen Bar Lite and normally I don't do reviews but you know what? I've had a lot of problems on my desk being able to actually see things and working at night for me is almost impossible because there's just not enough light in my home office to work. The only light I've got in the room is an overhead light and it's positioned in a really bad place for working. I've tried desk lamps and nothing seems to work. So when Bank offered me this screen bar for review, I jumped at the opportunity. And since I put the screen bar up on my monitor, it hasn't been off. It's a really awesome light source. It balances on the top of your monitor. It has a sort of weighted element that keeps it in place. And it has a controller. There's two versions of the light, one with a controller and one without. Now mine's got the controller, which allows me to control the brightness, but also the color temperature. So I can warm it up or I can cool it down. The light plugs into a USB socket into my computer so I don't even have to allocate a power socket for it. And because it's all contained within my computer monitor, I don't have lots of power cables everywhere and it's all really neat and tidy. I'm not having to give up any additional desk space for the light. So if you're looking for a better light source for your computer for working late at night and for doing things not only on the desktop in front of you but also on the computer, then I suggest you go and have a look at the Bank Light. I've got a link down below to the Bank website and also to the Bank Light at Amazon.com. I encourage you to have a look at it if light is your problem. So now let's get working on the project itself. Now I went to Vect Easy and I looked up Christmas design elements and fell in love with this rocking horse. And that's the element that we're going to use. Now this is a free download, so you can download the file to your computer. It comes as an SVG file and also as an EPS. So let's switch across to Illustrator where I have the EPS version open. So I'm back here in Illustrator with the Vect Easy EPS file open here. I'm going to the selection tool. I'm going to select my horse and copy it. I'm just using Control or Command C. I have a brand new document created, so I'll press Control or Command V. Now I'm going to size my horse. I'm thinking something around about 400, somewhere between sort of three and 500 pixels in dimension is a good size to set it for at this stage. Now I've got some highlight areas here, so I'm going to the group selection tool. I just want to get rid of those just to clean the horse lines up so it's a little bit easier to work with. So I've just got a single shape here. With the shape selected, I'll choose Effect and then Effect Gallery. We're going to use this texture set of effects and we want patchwork. And when you've got the patchwork set and a square size, you'll be able to see what are going to be ultimately your pixels. Now, I think I've got too many at this stage. So let me just wind up my square size to a larger amount. And this is why we made the horse about the size that we did. So we'd have a bit of flexibility because we've only got between one and 10 as our square size. So if you have a really, really big horse, you're going to have lots and lots of pixels and you're going to sort of miss out on this pixel art sort of style. So I'm I'm thinking that for me right now, seven is going to give me a good number of pixels. So I'm just looking at these squares and just saying that's what I want to have ultimately as my pixel art. So I'll click OK. So here are the lines all marked out on our horse. So with the horse selected, let's go to the layers palette. And I'm going to lock the horse down at this stage and I'm going to add a brand new layer that I can work in. Let's zoom into the horse because we want to see the top of the head all the way down to the bottom of the rocker that it's on. Let's go to the line segment tool. I'm going to hold the shift key as I just draw a horizontal line. I want it to have some color, so I'll just make it black. And you can wind down the stroke to something that is just able to be seen easily. 
Now I'm going to place my line over the top line in the illustration, the top line that we were able to create using that patchwork filter. So I'm just going to place it in position and having done that, let's just zoom out a little bit because it will help if I can see the entire horse. Now, if you end up with sort of like a quarter of a box here, just put your line on the first line that you can actually see and I'm going to show you in a minute how you're going to fix that up. So just make sure it's lined up with the first line that you can see clearly. Select over the line and choose Effect and then Distort and Transform and Transform. You'll need to turn preview on and you'll need to set it at least at this stage to about 10 copies so you can see what you're doing. And because we want to create a vertical series of lines, I'm going to start to increase the vertical. And what I'm looking for is placing the next line over the next line in the underlying image. And you can see that it's sort of working, but it's losing it a little bit. So maybe 12 is a better value and 12 is a better value. Now the lines are pretty much lining up here. If they don't line up perfectly with whole numbers, you might have to try 12.1 or 11.4 or something Thing, so that you can get these lines pretty much lined up correctly all the way through the piece of art. And I've been pretty lucky here, this is looking good to me, so I'll click OK. Now, if you had a quarter of a one left at the top, let's see what you're going to do. Once you've created your lines, you can drag this line up. And when you do, you just want to place it so that the next line is over the line in the art so that you can make up this extra distance. So get the lines correctly spaced first of all and then adjust it if you need to, to be able to get access to this point in here. Ultimately, you need this set of lines all the way across your art because we're going to be filling up these little boxes in a minute. We're actually going to get access to the little boxes that we're creating. Now I'm short at the bottom here because I moved mine up. So let's see what I would do. With the line still selected, I'm going to the Appearance panel. I'll click on the Transform tool and I need to add another copy or two. I only needed one, but you might need to add more, but you certainly want your lines to be completely covering your art. And now we're going to do the exact same thing, but in the opposite direction. So I'm going to draw out my line. I'm going to zoom in here and place the line over the first line that I can see in my patchwork. Now I can do better here, so I'm going to select this one here. And then I'll choose Effect, Distort and Transform and then Transform. Turn Preview on, I want quite a few copies. And I want to set the horizontal value and chances are that the horizontal and vertical values are going to be the same. So if you use 12 for the vertical, you can use 12 or at least that's a good starting point for the horizontal. Now I'm going to add a few more lines here so I get plenty because I can't move my art right now. So I'll just click OK. Let's zoom back out. Let's make sure it's OK. I've got way too many squares. So let's go back to this line. Let's go back to the appearance panel for it. Click on transform, turn preview on and I can just wind back the number of copies to the number of copies that I actually need. Let's just add 42 here. Now if I want to be able to perhaps extend the rocker on this horse, I need to move my lines over a little bit. So having done that, I'm going to start moving them over and just making sure that they all line up. But this will give me access to these boxes in a minute. What we're basically doing at this stage is just creating a grid that mirrors the grid that we created on the horse so we can fill in the grid in a minute. And to fill in the grid, we're going to use the Live Paint Bucket tool. So let me just go and get my Layers palette again because I seem to have lost that. With the horse locked down, the only thing I can select is these lines. And so we need to expand them because right now they're just lines with transformations on them. Object, Expand, Appearance, and then Object, Ungroup until Ungroup is no longer an option. So now with our line selected, we're going to make a Live Paint object. So I'll choose Object and then Live Paint and Make. And this creates this as a Live Paint object and we can fill it now with the Live Paint Bucket tool. So I'm just going to zoom in so I can see where I'm working. And when I hover over these lines with the Live Paint Bucket tool, you can see I'm getting little borders around the line. 
Let's double click the Live Paint tool, see that we have Paint Fills and Cursor Swatch Preview turned on. You need to disable Paint Strokes, we don't want the strokes, we're going to toss them out in a minute. You will want to highlight things because you need to see what you're doing and you can choose a colour that's just fine. Now I'm going to be painting with red, so let's go and get red up here. So let's just fill it with red. Doesn't matter what colour you use, you just need a colour at this stage. And I think the best thing to do is to just hover over every box that is pretty much filled, every box that has a sort of fill from the horse below and just fill those. And if you have a box that's sort of like about three quarters full, that's fine too. But anything that's sort of less than half full, don't fill it in. And you'll go through and just fill in all of these boxes by just dragging over them with the Live Paint Bucket tool. Now this is going to take me a few minutes, so let's just speed up the video and come back when I'm done. So I've pretty much finished off the horse as we see it here. So I'm going to turn off the horse layer here so I can see how things are looking. And I particularly want to make sure that the legs on the horse are pretty even. And I think I haven't got the rockers on the horse quite as well done as I might. So I'll turn these back on and off until I've got them looking the way I want them to look. Now, if you go too far and fill something in that you don't want to fill in, go to the None option that's always there in the Swatches panel and just go over the area with the Live Paint Bucket tool, but with None because that just removes any fill. You certainly wouldn't want to fill it with white. You definitely want to use None because we don't want those areas to be filled with anything at all. So at this point you can just finesse your horse, you might want to give it a sort of tail effect, you may want something more there and you can do that at this stage. So you can be creative but you've got the basic horse shape created for you. Now that that's done we're going to take these Live Paint Bucket objects and we'll choose Object Live Paint and we'll choose expand and that expands the live paint bucket object. So let's see what we've got. Well we've got a group here that is the horse and we've got a group here that is the lines. So we're just going to trash the lines because we don't need that any longer. All we need is our horse. So let's see what we've got. Well we've got lots and lots of boxes. So let's go and grab all of these boxes. So I'm just going to click on this group here so that all my little boxes are selected and let's go to Unite and that'll unite it into a single compound shape. It has to be a compound shape for this particular object because you can see that there's a hole in it. This is the horse here but there's a big hole in between his legs and so that has to be a compound shape. So this is a object that we can now fill with all sorts of things or we could just leave it as it is. But this is how we create pixel art in Illustrator from an original image. So let me just drag a duplicate away and we could obviously recolor this duplicate. So I hope that's helped you understand how you can harness the power of Illustrator and the effects that are in Illustrator to create pixel based art. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. Please comment and tell me if you enjoyed the video and share it with others who you think might be interested in it. And if you're interested in the bank screen bar, the link is in the description below. Until next time, I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me here on my YouTube channel.